and he was in the Navy and he went over to the um, European countries. He came back and went right out to uh, Japan. So he became a Marine. And the uh, Navy and the Marines are almost one of the same. I will say that carefully. Uh, he, as soon as he got back and World War II was over, you, re you remember Korea? Korea ended up being a problem. And they re-enlisted everybody back into Korea. So he gave a lot of his life to our country. And he never talked about it. He, was, he just said to us, war is awful. War is something we should always pray not to have to go to. So the other thing I wanted to share with you this morning is the flag that we have hanging over there. That flag was given to us by P.J. Burke. P.J. Burke graduated in 2002. He also was one of our, he went on to the Air Force Academy. He became the number one ace pilot in his class. He was asked, what do you want to do? Because most of the time, that number one ace pilot goes and is a, is a uh, jet pilot. You know, you've seen them. The, the jet pilots and all the, all the glory that goes with it. And he said, no, I don't want to do that. He said, I want to fly helicopters. He was called in the commandant office and asked, why do you want to fly helicopters? Being a pilot of a jet is what everybody does when they're number one in the class. And he said, no, I want to fly helicopters because I want to save people. So he was on, he would take the helicopters, and he was in Afghanistan. And he, while he was in Afghanistan, he had an American flag. He flew the flag and over the battle scene. And if you read the little plaque that's underneath there, it'll give you the names of the people that were on the helicopter and a brief story of it where the battle took place. So when he brought the flag to us, PJ was one of my students. He was, he was always a wild kid. <laughs> Unpredictable, very bright, but he decided, I can't just give you the flag. He uh, got permission to fly a helicopter over the school and have the flag waving at us as he flew over the school, landing and giving us the flag. So he had to receive special permission because you cannot take those uh, helicopters uh, over, over uh, buildings like this without permission. It was on a flight plan normally. Today, he is teaching how to fly helicopters. And he's in Alabama, and he's a father of two children. And periodically, he drops in to visit. And because he was such a knucklehead sometimes, he loves to tell kids what not to do. So, uh, if he ever comes while you're here, we'll make sure that you get to meet him. At this time, I'd like to invite Ezekiel to begin our rosary and ceremony. Ezekiel. Uh, good morning, team community. Today, we have a special guest speaker and veteran here, Mr. Mike Ugemos. Mike served in the U.S. Army from 1984 through 1994. The majority of his time was in the U.S. Army Special Forces on a nine-man intelligence team known as SODA. SODA stands for Special Operations Team Alpha. These are the people who speak multiple languages and spend a great deal of time in the shadows listening and watching. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Mike Dugemos. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home, your school, spend a little bit of time with you. And I'm gonna back up and give you a little bit of history, because it's important. If you look out and you see the folks that are seated here today and you walk out to your communities, 
you're going to run into a number of veterans, men, women, people that aren't much older than you. And ask yourself for a moment, why? We talked a little bit about Armistice Day. We raised the flag this morning. We did the national anthem. So what? Who knows when the first American died as an American? Anyone? Who knows when the Revolutionary War was declaration? <coughs> You guys are in school, right? <laughs> yes. 1776, it's great. The first two Americans died in 1770. Anybody know who they were? You guys have history, right? I'm just checking, right? Okay, yes, sir. Pardon? Boys of Liberty. Boys of Liberty. It was at, you guys heard of the Boston Massacre? Oh. Huh. So, there were two killed, and it actually goes back and forth who was first, who was second. There's a runaway slave, Christmas Adams. <coughs> he was 47 years old. The other one was an 11-year-old boy, Christopher Seidel. Does anyone know why they died? Why were they killed? Huh. This is important. It's actually why we're here today. <laughs> they were killed because they were participating in or associated with something where they disagreed with those around them. That's why all the veterans are here today before. Anybody know we had an election? <laughs> Have people been agreeing or disagreeing? <laughs> the fundamental right we have as Americans and the fundamental thing that led to all these people dying which is why we have Memorial Day, which is why so many people have served in different places, is the right to disagree. Does everyone understand that? Okay, this is important. It ties into the other piece. So uh, I never graduated high school. I left home at 15. I bummed around for two years homeless, shoveled, pounded, big manure, received what's known as a GED. Anybody ever heard of that? Don't do it. Stay in school. The general education diploma. And then I enlisted into the Army at the age of 17 on my 17th birthday. And through that, I was able to do a whole number of things that I simply wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. I met people that believed in something bigger than them. I met people that were there because they had no other options. I met people that were conscientious objectors. They were medics. There were chaplains assistants. I met people that wanted to go to war. I met an incredible slice of diversity of America. And the one thing that was common amongst all of us, what do you think it was? Anybody? You're an American. Above and beyond all else, you're an American. <coughs> Let's go back to Christmas Atticus, 47-year-old freed slave because he freed himself and ran away, and an 11-year-old boy, Christopher Seidel. They died six years before the Declaration of Independence, and many died since. But more importantly, many more joined up to defend our rights. I can see some people kind of bored wondering what's he talking about. Yeah, I'm looking at you. This is important. They believed in something greater than themselves, and they stood up and took a risk. For many years, they were forced to through the draft. Every person that serves in uniform today volunteers. 
every person that serves today, all the people sitting here, people out in your communities, black, white, red, yellow, whatever, volunteered in something bigger than themselves. And because of that, we have the right to argue. We have the right to disagree. We have the rights that many, many other people don't. That's why we celebrate Veterans Day. It's not for free lunches on Fridays to talk to these folks. It's for the right to sit across from someone and argue. It's for the right to believe that your rights are larger than those of anybody else while respecting the exact same opinion from those around you. When we raise that flag, who knows the history of the flag? The history of the Star Spangled Banner, which played beautifully on the sax this morning. Anybody ever heard of the War of 1812? Who are we fighting? The British. What did they just burn down? The White House. The White House. Who wrote the Star Spangled Banner? I like this one. <laughs> Francis Scott Key. There, there, there's some. There's some urban myth around this. I'm going to tie it in, then I'm going to turn the mic back. Because this isn't an admonishment. This is a celebration of who we are as a people. It really is. And we are a people. Francis Scott Key came down from New York. He was a lawyer. He was on a ship. He was sent out to talk to the British Admiralty to get a release of one person. He went out and met with the British Admiralty. He was on their ship. He earned the release of that person through negotiation. And then they put him over on an American ship that said they couldn't go back because they were about to bomb Fort McKinney. There was a complete armada. And they were going to pummel Fort McHenry into dust. And it started. So he sat on the ship and he watched the rocks go away. He watched a bombardment the likes of which have rarely been seen. A bunch of people in that court went and took the big flag down. It weighs about 500 pounds. It's not a joke. About 500 pounds. They took it down, they put up what's called a storm flag. The littler one didn't weigh as much. It flapped in the breeze while it was bombed all night long. The British were so confident that the Americans would capitulate, surrender, at the end of that bombardment, they were kind of celebrating on the ships, making fun of us. The morning light rose, and lo and behold, the big flag was there, not the little storm flag. The American troopers re-rose this big, huge flag. Anybody know what the middle finger is? Don't show it. <laughs> that act with that flag was a middle finger to the British. There's a politer way to say it. I apologize, Father. But he was naked, so we're okay. <laughs> because we would not be enslaved to a crown. That's the third verse of the Star Spangled Banner, which is often misunderstood. We would not be enslaved to another. We had rights above and beyond. And we have problems as a country. But we have beauty as a country few will ever understand, aside from those who volunteer to serve her. So I leave you with this. What will you do? Will you serve the people around you with your faith? Will you serve your country with your behaviors as well as your words? Will you fight for the right of people to disagree with you? Because as an American, on this day more than any, aside from one, that's Memorial Day, that's why we're here. With that, I'd like to thank you. And if you need to do man, come back to the community. And now we'd like to recognize all of our veterans here today with us.
Non-commissioned officer Mike Gugemos. Mr. Gugemos served the U.S. Army from 1984 to 1994. Please stand. Mr. Major Dunning served in the U.S. Air Force from 1958 to 1981. I'm <laughs> photographer Lou Mills. Mr. Mills served in the U.S. Marines from 1947 to 1949. Retired Corporal, excuse me, Lieutenant Commander Chaplain Joseph Father Wambach. Father Wambach served as a Navy Chaplain from 1973 to 1974. <laughs> retired Corporal Louis Knowles. Corporal Knowles served in the U.S. Army from 1947 to 1956. Jack Barton, Sergeant Barton, served in the U.S. Army from 1976 to 1980 and is currently the head of security at Z and Traffic Prep. Yeah. Retired Lieutenant Quinn Beatty. Lieutenant Beatty served in the Army National Guard from 1976 to 1982 and is currently a member of the science faculty at Z and Traffic Prep.
Major Jar McGrady. Major McGrady served in the U.S. Air Force from 1989 to 2007 and is the mother of Catherine McGrady, seating class of 2019. Colonel Rob McCready. Colonel McCready currently serves in the U.S. Air Force. He began his service in 1986 and is the father to Catherine McCready, seat in class of 2019. <laughs> Retired Master Sergeant Patricia Curtis. Master Sergeant Curtis served in the U.S. Air Force from 1983 to 2003 and is mother to Jessica Curtis, seat in class of 2019. <laughs> Retired Captain Charles Self. Captain Self served in the U.S. Air Force from 1950 to 1973. He is the father-in-law to Karen Self, seat in girls basketball head coach, and member of the faculty, as well as the grandparent of Rachel Self, seat in class of 2018, and Kara Self, seat in class of 2020. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Paul Spink. Staff Sergeant Spink served in the U.S. Air Force from 1977 to 1983, and is the father to Claire Spink, seat in class of 2020. And now I'd like to invite uh, Father Dan to uh, begin our rosary for the country. Great, let's be seated. Let us begin. Almost perfect mother, Our Lady of the Americas, intercede on our behalf as we begin the praying of the Most Holy Rosary for our beloved country, the United States of America. We begin this prayer as we begin all of our prayers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. His first attention, our, the first our Father, is for our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. That our Lord protect the history and heritage of our nation to be found in the city, and that for generations to come, all who visit her may see the guiding hand of God upon our nation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 